What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner, and today I'm gonna to show you how to disassemble, clean, and oil an AR-15 or M4. So I was specifically asked to do a cleaning and disassembly video on an M4A1, um, so yeah, but it's AR-15s, M4s, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this is gonna be how you clean and oil it and take it apart. Now, everyone has their own way of cleaning and oiling, but uh, just, you know, this is gonna get you where you need to be, but if you don't like it, there are plenty of videos on YouTube of how to clean and oil an AR. So, Again, this is an M4A1, this is by Daniel Defense. I was asked to do a video on a M4A1 specifically, so that's what we're gonna do today. I honestly don't even think it's that dirty, but I don't mind, it makes it faster to do this video for you guys. And then as far as cleaning goes, um, I use M Pro 7, this is a nasty clear bottle, but it's just refilled with this. So M Pro 7 is my main cleaner. I'll also use this um, Outers Nitro Solvent Bore Cleaner. Um, I don't use this for every cleaning, but it does help clean the barrels. And then, um, I don't have gloves. I do recommend wearing gloves. Um, I honestly don't like wearing gloves, but I know it's important and it'll help keep your skin clear and prevent you from maybe getting cancer later on because your skin is the biggest organ on your body. So um, even though I don't have gloves, I do use uh, D-Lead soap. So if you're gonna be dumb like me, at least use this soap. It's not very expensive. I think it's like 15, 20 bucks for an entire gallon. And I just fill a dispenser with this. So again, you should be wearing gloves. I'm not gonna be wearing gloves today, so don't kill me. The cancer from the cleaning might kill me, but hopefully this gets it out. And this gets rid of, what is it, carbon, it cleans lead and other metals from skin. So good to use, and uh, a lot of gun stores can actually order it. So let's get into the cleaning, and I'm gonna bring the camera closer so you guys can get an overhead view, and let's get to it. All right, so first thing when cleaning is obviously make sure it's clear. It is clear. And then one thing I like to do is take off my slings if I'm running a quick detach point just because it gets in the way. So pop this one out, we'll pop this one out take the upper and lower apart. So that's just these two pins right here. So we're gonna pop these out. They're captured so they don't come all the way out, but once you pull those out, there you go. So that's your upper and lower. And then as far as the lower goes, the only thing I'll really do is take the buffer assembly out. So you'll push down on this pin right here. I just use my thumb. So I'm gonna push down and this comes out. There you go. So that's the whole disassembly of the lower. Um, I will wipe everything down and oil it. And luckily it's not too dirty. So this will be kind of quick for you guys. And then with your upper, you're gonna pull your charging handle back and your bolt's gonna come with it. So pull that back. Now, once you have it this far, you can just pull the bolt and it'll come down. And then your charging handle comes back and down. And that is your upper assembly. So we'll take the whole bolt apart real fast. Uh, you'll notice it's not too dirty, but if you uh, need to take it apart and you can't get this piece out with your fingernail, you can use any type of pin or uh, punch stuff like that. You're gonna pull this firing pin retaining pin out and then your firing pin is gonna fall out the back. So that's the firing pin. And then once the firing pin is out, you're gonna push your bolt back and you're gonna twist this cam pin to the side here. So once it's sideways, you can pull that out. Maybe, there we go. Oh, no, pushed it right back in. So that's your cam pin. And then now you can pull your bolt out. Now I will take it a step further. I like to take the extractor off. So you can use this pin or your firing pin and you're gonna push that little pin right there. Just don't lose it. And then pull that out and now your extractor comes off. And that's the whole disassembly. You don't need to go any further than that. A lot of times people won't take this apart. It just depends. I like just cleaning under the extractor. Notice it's a little dirty, but this gun would run perfectly fine. And as far as how I clean it, I will use 30 cal patches. So. Um, 30 cal patches are sold in like bags of a thousand. I'll just buy a big pack. And that's what I started with. I bought these if I needed them smaller for like pushing a patch through the barrel. What I would, what I used to do is just cut them into fourths. That way I had it. So you only have to buy one bag of patches and it'll work for this. And these also work really good for cleaning almost every other gun. Cause it's just big enough that you can get your hand on there. And then I'll spray the M Pro 7 cleaner. And then you can wipe everything down. So, so it makes it pretty easy and yeah, just wipe everything down. So you see just a little bit of dirt so far. And I'm not, I'm gonna speed up some of these parts just cause it's not worth showing you everything. This will sit here forever for this. Um, a lot of cleaning kits come with this nylon toothbrush. Mine is a little old, but uh, these are pretty cheap. So I'll take the same 30 cal patch, stick it right here and spin it around in where the bolt goes just to kind of break up any debris. And you see it's pretty dirty in there. Flip it on this side. 
And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. I mean, think about your car, right? When you do it for maintenance, it still gets dirty pretty fast and there's parts that stay dirty, but as long as you do the main maintenance, it's gonna run. I'll even come in from the back here. So, oops. So put it in the back and then same thing, kind of spin it around. This is why these brushes get destroyed is because I just use them for everything. But you see right off the bat, got a lot of the dirt off and then we'll wipe the bolt down with it as well. Another option would be using um, like a towel or a microfiber rag. I'm just showing you guys how much dirt is actually on mine. So again, this gun would have been fine to go to the range. You just got to keep it oiled, but cleaning is also important. So here is the firing pin. Notice it's not super dirty, but uh, it'll wipe off pretty nice. So looks a lot better. And then we got the extractor right here. I'm just wiping off the bulk of the initial like dirt and carbon on there. And then we'll get a little bit finer with the, the brush and then uh, more cleaner. We'll wipe down the charging handle. I like Radiant Raptor charging handles. They're very nice. I basically use them in almost every AR. Yeah, this patch is getting pretty dirty. I mean, at this point, it's better to just use another patch now. Got our little firing pin retaining pin right here. Just give everything one more wipe down. I get OCD with cleaning at times, but it's also to the point where uh, doing weekly shooting, daily YouTube videos, it's hard to want to really detail clean these because it's just time consuming, especially if you're, if I shoot multiple rifles in one weekend, this takes a while to get through them all. So with your locking lug area here, there's a couple things you can do. You can either just spray it and then brush it. Um, if you want to get extra OCD, you can wrap this up and then just put it in between every lug right there. Just depends on your level of OCD. You see, it gets a lot of the dirt off. And then we're going to put all this to the side just for now. And I'm going to clean up the inside of the upper here. So I kind of do the same thing. Just take the patch, wipe in the upper receiver. And uh, near the front up here, it's going to be the dirtiest. So you see, it's coming out pretty dirty. I'll put it on the side there and then take the same brush and use it to get all in there. All right, so in the upper receiver, it looks pretty good right now. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna spray some of this nitro solvent uh, bore cleaner in there and I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. So I use um, cleaning mats, depending on what you wanna use this on, just make sure you cover it because this stuff can stain, especially since it comes out the barrel. So um, I'll just, kind of angle it down and I'm going to just spray this in there. So, and we'll just let that sit for a little bit. And then now we're going to work on the lower. So with this, since it's so massive, I'm just going to take this microfiber towel and just like wipe it down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's already pretty clean. I actually haven't shot this gun in a little bit. I was running a Vortex Razor one to six on here but I took that off to throw it on a Block 3 M4A1 build, so the URGI, and uh, I haven't shot it with this EOTech on there yet. I tore that EOTech off a different gun, and uh, I've just been kind of playing around with my setups recently in the last few months, but I haven't got to shoot all the ones that I moved around, so I need to get back on that. But yeah, this lower already looks pretty clean, so um, one thing you could do is, uh, Again, depending on how OCD you want to get, you can take the uh, rag and just stuff it in the tube and just kind of spin it around and it'll get a lot of the dirt out. But uh, this isn't kind of, this isn't really necessary. This is just something that I'm doing, but we're going to just stuff it in there. And then we'll just kind of spin it around and pull it out. 
but it's not that dirty. So again, that's just kind of an OCD thing, but lower is very clean. And uh, that's really all we need to do to that. So now we'll get back to the upper. So there's a couple ways you can do this. I have a multi-piece uh, cleaning rod here. Now this is not ideal, but this is one of the most common cleaning kit rods you can get. So um, even though it's not the best one out there, it's probably the most common. If you get the coated rods, like the coated one-piece rods, they're a lot better, but uh, I've never ruined a gun doing this. So I do have this little guide here. So this prevents it from like really kind of going all over the place in the barrel. And what you do is got your brush right here and then you got your bore guide and we're going to just push it to the front of the barrel. Now there's a lot of ways to do this. I used to go in and then back out the back end, but uh, I've heard mixed things. So now I'll push it all the way through the barrel. And then once it comes out of the barrel, I'll just take this off. Now I know that's kind of like an annoying thing, but um, I've just been told that you should really just push everything forward, not bring it back down the back end. But again, everyone has their own way of cleaning. I'm not necessarily opposed to doing it different ways, but this is just something that I've been doing recently. So um, I'm gonna just put one spray of this M-Pro 7 cleaner in there just to kind of help push it through, but I should have sprayed enough of the nitro solvent bore cleaner. So now with this, having an optic on there makes it nice because it kind of angles the barrel down. Um, you're not, this is not gonna get all in frame for you guys, but I'm gonna push this through. Again, we have the bore guide right here. I just make sure that's at the front as my upper falls over. So I'm gonna make sure this bore guide is right there and then I'm gonna just push this rod all the way through. Again, it's not gonna be all the way in frame for you guys, but I'll try my best. So we're gonna push it all the way through. And once it's out, I uh, unscrew this and it kind of already loosens up just going through the barrel like that. So that pops off and then I'll pull it back out the back end and I'll just try to do it as carefully as I can. You can leave that guide there and just pull it out. And then we basically redo it like two more times and then I'll run a patch to it. So I'm gonna run it through two more times and then uh, we'll run a patch to it. All right, so I ran it through two more times. Another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spray just a little bit more cleaner and then I'm gonna use a chamber brush to clean up the locking lug area, so the chamber area. And for that one, I have a chamber brush on a different rod and these will get destroyed over time. So mine doesn't look the greatest, but it will still clean it. But if they get too destroyed, you just um, get a new one. So with this, I'm gonna just push it in and I'm gonna just kind of give a spinning motion and pull it in and out. So just to kind of break up any debris that is gonna be in that chamber area. And then, so once I have all that done, I take one of these smaller patches. So again, you can either cut them in fourths from the 30 cal patch or you could buy some. There's a couple different styles of them. There's these really thin ones that are almost see-through and then there's the thicker ones. These push through much easier depending on what rod you're using, um, but these I feel like are a little bit more solid. Now it depends on how you push them through. They make the little eyelet piece that goes on the end of your cleaning rod. Um, I've used those before, it's not terrible. Um, there's also the jags and the jags really need these really thin ones. And a jag is just like a pointy piece that sticks out and pushes the patch through. Um, but a jag, again, you need a really thin patch and a really small patch and it's gotta be perfect. So my, my way of getting around that is I'm gonna just stick this right here. And what I got is a pellet gun rod. So this is a .177 caliber rod, so it's thinner than the 22 caliber cleaning rod I have. And it works really well for just pushing a patch through. So you notice I'm just using the screw in. Um, it's not focusing. I'm just using the, the end um, that has this, the threads on there. So as long as you push straight through, again, I've never had any issue, so I'm gonna just push this patch all the way through, which I did that and then it got lopsided in there. So I'm gonna push it right through on the middle once I line it up. So I'm gonna push through. And again, that thin patch barely like has any friction on there. So I'm gonna push that through and there you go. 
So you see the patch is pretty nasty. I'm not gonna reuse that patch. I'm just gonna push another one through. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these thicker patches. So again, this one is much thicker than that one. That one's almost see-through. Um, so this I think is better for Jags. This is gonna be better for mine since I'm using a smaller cleaning rod. And I'll also just put some uh, cleaner on this patch. And then I just line it up right in the middle there and then I use this 17 or this 17 caliber cleaning rod to push straight through the middle. And uh, I'm gonna just line it up on the table here. So push it straight down. And I just pushed it out the bottom there. So again, see it held on pretty good and I don't feel like I'm scratching my chamber. You see, works pretty well. And uh, it's not too, too bad now, but uh, I'm gonna brush it just a couple more times and then we'll call it good there. Another way for cleaning your locking lug area is to use Q-tips. So since we use the chamber brush, if you use a Q-tip and just kind of wipe in here, you'll notice it gets a lot of the gunk out. And um, this only gets like dirtier when you suppress it too. So if you're using a suppressor, you might have to do this a little bit to really get it clean in there. So. But this is kind of just the, the tedious part of cleaning a gun is getting all the nooks and crannies of the barrel. But again, it, as long as you have it mostly clean and you keep the gun oiled, it's gonna run. And I've been told if you run the brush through the barrel too many times, I mean, oh, eventually you're gonna start stripping rifling out. Um, just so th there is like that perfect in between of like, you know, it's clean enough to run, but uh, it's not like so like scrubbed that you're actually ruining the rifling, so. I mean, I would say this gun is pretty good, but I'm gonna run the brush through there just a couple more times. So I'm gonna spray my M Pro 7 cleaner in there. I'm gonna do the chamber brush first, just for a quick run. So again, I'm gonna just insert it from right here. Just break up anything that might be in there. And then just run some of this nitro solvent bore cleaner in there. And we'll run the barrel brush through just a couple more times. So it's still coming out like this. Um, this is where you can just kind of do it until you feel like it's good. I'm just gonna run a dry patch through there and call it good for today because um, yeah, I don't think it needs to be crazy, but yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts on this. Do you get it to the point where the patches are coming out perfectly clean or do you let it, do you let it be a little dirty in there? I, I feel like it's really hard to get it to come out perfect. I just ran a dry patch through there just to make sure there's nothing. Um, now the other thing I'll do is I'll look through the barrel and I'll kind of like hold it up to the light just to make sure there's no debris left in there. And uh, honestly, it looks pretty good. And then the last thing is I'm gonna just make sure this lock and lug area is all dried up, which looks pretty good. So Q-tips work really good for stuff like this. And honestly, it's better to buy the name brand Q-tips because the really cheap ones just get flaky and fall apart or break in half. The name brand Q-tips hold up pretty well. So now we're gonna oil this thing. And uh, yeah, oil wise, I'm just gonna use this Hoppy's oil and then my buddy Angelo's Jello sauce. So this is more of like a grease, um, but it mixes well with oil. So, so for the buffer and spring, I'll put a little bit of oil on there because I feel like it helps keep it running slick. I don't notice too much like grittiness in the buffer tube. And then another thing you could do is put some of this jello sauce in there because the grease keeps it pretty well oiled up too. My bottle's getting light. But, because yeah, that's just gonna slide in the tube and it's just gonna help keep it lubed up. So, yeah, it's not gritty in there. And then I also put just a drop of oil on each side of the springs in the trigger pack or whatever trigger you might be running. And then I'll put just a little bit of oil on the trigger itself and then these takedown pins to make it so that they're pretty slick to take in and out. So, but that, I mean, that's all I really do. Maybe put some oil. So yeah, just, just like the moving parts or spots where you see some of the silver, just where metal's rubbing against metal, um, even on this, which this will get oil on it anyways when you pull the charging handle back. But yeah, that's it for the lower. And then as far as the upper goes, we'll start putting the bolt carrier back together. So we're gonna take our bolt first and then 
we're going to put our extractor back on. So you need the extractor and the pin. So just set this on there. Take your pin and push it through. Sometimes you're going to have to press right here. So you're going to press, push in, and then just make sure it's even on both sides. And then with this, you're going to put it in the bolt carrier. Now you have to make sure the extractor is facing the right hand side of the bolt. Um, you can really only put this in one way or put the whole thing together one way. It will not go in crooked or backwards or anything. So with that facing to the right, you can put your cam pin in and then you're going to put it in sideways and then you're going to twist it so that the firing pin can go through that hole. So we're going to push this in and then we're going to twist it. Maybe. There we go. And then for the firing pin, with the firing pin, I like to put a little bit of the oil or the gun grease on there, just so that when you're firing it, it keeps it uh, nice and slick because this does move. Um, so I'll put a little bit of the jello sauce on there and just a drop of oil. Because if this sits for a long time, the jello sauce can still congeal or almost anything can congeal or dry out, but that just keeps it working together. And then I'll put that in there. And then once you have that in, you'll put your firing pin retaining pin in. So push that through. Sometimes it can be finicky, but once it's in, there's your whole bolt carrier group. And then before we oil that, I'm going to just put some oil on this charging handle here. So just, I just run a streak on the top and the sides. And once you have that, you're going to put it into the big hole and drop it down until it falls into the groove. And right there is where it's captured. And you need it at least like halfway out so you can put the bolt back in. And then with the bolt carrier group, um, inside this cam pin area, I like to put jello sauce on both sides. My buddy that makes this stuff, he's the one that told me to do it this way. So he puts kind of a good amount on each side of the cam pin because every time you fire, this is going in and out. So it's a high use area. So the jello sauce will help keep it lubricated and keep your parts from wearing out faster. So basically it's just gonna be smashing in like that every time you shoot and that'll keep it nice and oiled. And then on the outside here, I'm gonna just put some oil basically on the main like track or the rail right here where you see again, the silver coming through. So just put some on all four sides and you don't have to go crazy, but uh, yeah, I mean that, that should be enough. I'm also gonna to just top it off with some jello sauce but if you only have oil or you only have grease, I mean, it's fine. This is just me being OCD. Honestly, when you're oiling a gun, half the oil, it gets wasted because it's just to hold you over until the next cleaning. So, and you should not be cleaning it once it's bone dry, you should clean it in between. So now that we have the bolt back together, we're gonna slide this in the upper here. So I'm just gonna put it in the hole, slide it forward. And one thing is your, uh, your bolt has to be forward. If it's back, that's gonna get hit on the cam pin right there, so make sure it's forward. Put it in the big hole, push it through, and I'll push it in and out just a little bit to kind of get that jello sauce kind of where it needs to go. And there you go. And you could wipe off the back here or you can just kind of rub it in. And when, you, when your gun sits like up like this, eventually stuff is gonna seep out the back. Jello sauce is not gonna seep out as much, but oil will seep out. So if you put a lot on there and then you stand it up in your safe, it's gonna be dripping in your safe, just so you know. And then we'll just put the upper and lower back together. So make sure your pins were open and then now we're gonna push them in. So I got the back one in first and then there we go. And now we can function check. So it doesn't sound gritty. You hear like a little bit of squeaking, but it doesn't sound gritty at all. But this is gonna shoot extremely nice. And uh, yeah, that's how you clean and oil and disassemble the AR-15 or the M4. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully this was a little helpful for you guys. Again, it doesn't have to be crazy and I know everyone does it their own way, but this is just what works for me. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next video.